Aloha, my lovelies. I want to wish every single one of you guys a happy of best holidays for all of you guys. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you and your family are doing amazing. I'm going to do uh, these videos like we did last year, um, which is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the planet alignments, what it's going to do for your sign. Uh, then we're going to basically jump into the forecast um, in regards to what's going to be unfolding for your sign, for yourself, for this coming 2021. So if you guys are, if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely like, comment, subscribe so that I can continue doing this every single year. Uh, this is the second year we're doing this. So if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely let me know. Sound off in the comments. So anyways, we're going to get into, this is going to be for Capricorn. So we're starting off with Capricorns. Um, so what, what's happening right now, I, I'm sure you guys have heard about the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. This is something that Capricorn has been experiencing for the past uh, three years. Uh, but last year was um, pretty much sitting in their sign. So, And that's their ruling planet. Saturn is the ruling planet of uh, of Capricorn and the early Aquarians as well. Uh, so we are going from having it sit in your first house to going moving into your second house. And that's where the conjunction of December 21st is going to be. It's going to be in your second house. So what does this mean for you Capricorns? Well, for a lot of you Capricorns, I want to say uh, this year, there's been major transformation for a lot of you guys. And keep in mind, you guys, that the predictions that are being given doesn't necessarily mean that you will experience it in the very beginning of the year. Uh, for some, it will be until February, uh, March, even April, that you start to see these changes. Now, it has a lot to do with the you know alignment in your natal chart. So again, depending on the degrees, that's how quickly or how long it may take for you to be able to see these manifestations. Nonetheless, they will unfold for you for this year, 2021. So when we're talking about the conjunctions, a lot of people don't really understand the major role that Jupiter and Saturn play. Now, I'm sure you guys know Saturn and Jupiter are the biggest planets, right? Aside from the sun. Uh, so what this means, you know, for some... Um, give and take, Jupiter takes and Saturn takes about 20 to 30 years to be able to transition every single sign, go into every single sign um, within a 30 year or 20 to 30 year uh, time frame. Um, so they go around the wheel. But in some frequencies or in some time frames, they may kind of align, but not necessarily as strong as they're, they're going to be. December the 21st. So what does this mean? Well, they're going to be aligning in Aquarius. So what that means is for the first time, um, Jupiter is conjuncting a Saturn in an air sign. So throughout history, if you look in the past, when we've had these alignments or somewhat conjunctions, like I said, not as close as they have um that we're going to be experiencing on December the 21st. But in history, when it has happened, it's been in, different, in the other elements. So what I mean by elements is, again, like I was saying, Jupiter and Saturn take roughly about 20 to 30 years to go through all the zodiac wheel, right? Each sign. So when Jupiter and Saturn align, they usually align in an element, meaning earth, air, fire, or water. Now, it usually takes roughly about 200 years to be able to transition into another, another element. So if we look back since the 1800s, it's been in earth elements, in Taurus and Virgo, Capricorn. Um, so now it's dipping itself in Aquarius, the element of air. So there is a huge transformation and transition that is happening here. Like I said, it takes about 200 years for it to go into a different element. So 
for some of you guys that are living this moment in time, we're not going to see this ever again, right? Our kids or the kids of our kids will experience this, like I said, within a time frame of 200 years when it goes into another sign. So, uh, not another sign, sorry, another element, meaning earth, air, fire, or water. Um, so what this means is when we look back into history, um, when Jupiter conjunct Saturn in the element of water, that's when we had the Renaissance. You know, the explosion, the massive explosion of painters, of poets, of people that really ran off of creativity and tapped into their imagination. Back then, we had, you know, people could only travel through boats, water element. So this was a major, major change, right? From that, we go into the element of fire, which was, I want to say roughly in the, what was it in the... So when we get when we went into the fire element, this was in the 1600s. Sorry, I was kind of going back um, and looking at my notes down here too. It's a lot of information, you guys. Um, so when we, it was around the 1600s. This was aggression. This was assertiveness. This was times of war. This was times of uh, pillaging and colonization. So um, and then fast forward. From the 1800s up until now, it's been on earth signs. So there's this massive expansion, the industrial side, the industrial age, right? The industrial revolution, um, power structures all to do with earth and, you know, everything to do with what the element of earth is, which is manifestation, the building, uh, the you know, the, the, the power, basically. Now, of course, we have, there's always light and shadow for each sign, just like anything in life, anything in nature. Um, and we've seen that. We've seen the culmination of that um, with this, you know, with this uh, conjunction in uh, Saturn, Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn, right? Capricorn is all to do with authority. It's all to do with... Um, with government, with, you know, so we've seen this transition, the culmination of it, uh, and, and how, you know, politics and government and et cetera, controlling and, and stuff like that. So we've experienced that transition. Now we're going into the element of air, like I said, in Aquarius. So this is major expansion, you know, after the crisis, a healing transition. This is, um, Saturn and Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius, we're shifting from Earth to uh, air energy, uh, more discoveries in science, uh, more, you know, thinking forward and thinking about the future and planning. Uh, really, I think that this 2021 is going to be about humanity because that's what Aquarius represents humanity uh the there's going to be this growth in regards to either the respect for human life or uh empathy and compassion because it is all tied and connected a lot like i said a lot of healing um so this is it's it's major you guys and this is going to affect every single sign in a very different way so let's get into how it's going to affect directly to you, Capricorn. So we have here, sorry, you guys, if I'm looking down, there's a lot of information and a lot of signs. Um, so this is going to greatly impact you if you have your Capricorn, uh, or sorry, if you have your sun, moon, or ascendant in Capricorn. Jupiter is in your second house, like I said. Um, this is in Aquarius, uh, there's going to be this feeling of release of stress. Uh, I think that, like I said, we've been experiencing this culmination of, you know, major transformation for Capricorns. You guys have been tested. You guys have really gone through. Uh, there is no greater word than transformation, I think, for Capricorns. Um, last year was, you know, 
a lot of uh, it was basically about Capricorn energy, right? Uh, because of Saturn and Jupiter's conjunction there. But the thing about this also is that though you may have experienced major transformations in your life, for some of you guys, you became parents. For others of you, you found a long lasting relationship. For others of you, you were booming in business. For others of you, health, there could have been health issues that came up, but you were able to overcome or you will be able to overcome and be good for the next, you know, 20 years. So again, a lot of transformation here, but with Jupiter and Saturn being together, Jupiter is a planet of expansion, right? It's a sign of, I'm going to bless you just because I'm benevolent. Uh, Saturn is a malefic planet. So it does not prize you. It does not give you uh, blessings unless you've put your hard work, determination, blood, sweat, and tears literally into what you're doing. So then it benefits you. Then it will bring manifestation. So for a lot of you guys, you Capricorns that have experienced tremendous uh, feeling of like increased responsibilities, increased um, stress in the workplace or uh, going towards your achievements, going towards your goals, uh, even, you know, trying to find balance with your career and your family life may have been extremely challenging. Well, Saturn is leaving your sign and it's going into the second house, which is Aquarius. What does this mean? This means that although it could have been very testing for you, um, it created momentum and it created, it guided you or it brought you down towards a path of fulfillment ultimately so before they leave your sign jupiter especially saturn is known to bless you with gifts so if you've been feeling like it's been really difficult there's in any any place in your life whether it's romance love ro uh, business finances money family whatever dynamic you're gonna feel a release of this stress so doors are going to start to open up for you. And this is Saturn blessing you, right? You've put in the work, you've put in the, the difficult task, and, and you've gotten pretty much, you know, your ducks in a row. And I'm going to bless you. You are, ultimately, I am your ruling planet. So as a father, it's going to bless you after you've put in that extra work. So again, don't be surprised if by the end of December going into January, you start to experience doors opening up where you thought they were already closed. For a lot of you guys, especially in relationships, people from the past trying to reunite, reconnect, reconcile, um, not necessarily a good time to start uh, something that was already done with. Uh, take it as a blessing and be like, <laughs> be bygone um, because there, it, it's about embracing the new for you. Uh, so again, this feeling of stress is going to be leaving, you know, and, and, and keep in mind, um, they had been in your first house, right? And de depending on how your natal chart is and where you have certain planets, uh, that's what was mostly affected. So again, um, I know for some, it could have been sitting in your fifth house as well. So what that means is, you know, this is all about leisure, about fun, about so dealing with these type of energies, it could have felt like you couldn't take vacation time or like you couldn't have a day off even on your days off. That type of energy. Well, Saturn and Jupiter leaving, it, it's almost a feeling of like not having to deal with that time of type of relief, uh, type of stress, but also it's your manifestations becoming a reality, Capricorn. So again, the potential is massive there. Um, so putting work and effort uh now it's basically seeing the results of what you've been working on it's seeing the results the manifestations of your hard work and hard labor second house uh has everything to do with material so again don't think for a second that if you're having financial difficulties or still trying to find the balance in your finances do not be surprised if you start to uh, receive job op offers you know job offers where you weren't even trying to get them uh, don't be surprised if you get unexpected news that is going to really push you to the next level. Um, opportunities to make money, money on the side or starting your own business. 
All of this is because the second house is the material, right? The physical, the tangible. So being, a, and it is a finance house. So again, all your hard work and determination is going to start to pay off. There's no restrictions. Remember, Saturn is not there anymore. So whatever it is that you've been working on or putting your energy towards, that's exactly what's going, to, the rewards you're going to start to see. So this is beautiful, beautiful energy, Capricorn. Um, expansion and growth and success. Okay, so Jupiter will be in Pisces in your third house uh, from May all the way to July. What does this mean? Knowledge and communication. For those of you guys who teach, for those of you guys that have to do with the public, those of you guys that have to do um, speeches or anything like that in your career, this is amazing energy, you guys, because communication is going to be so easy for you. It's like honey, you know, your words are like honey, attracting the masses. So this is very powerful energy for those of you guys that are in the public eye or deal with the public. Um, for others of you, uh, again, like I said, Jupiter in Aquarius in your second house, square in Uranus. So what this means is this is going to happen in your fifth house. So this is um, this is Taurus. Taurus is in your fifth house from February all the way to June. This is about getting rid of limiting beliefs for you guys. This is uh, restrictions that you've been carrying for a very long time. And this could come as far as like from childhood. Things that are no longer serving you. Um, this is... Uh, the, the Uranus is all about unexpected changes, right? <laughs> Um, so what that means is it, it's bringing newness to you, but it also is going to be shaking up your old beliefs. This is uh, expanding in your knowledge, expanding in your belief system philosophically for some of you guys, changing uh, or following a different path from your belief system in general. So again, whatever it is that you've been, you know, carrying around or believing in from childhood up until now, it's going to be major, majorly transformative, uh, very, it's almost like following your heart and going towards your truth. And that's what you're going to be drawn to for this 2021. Now, also, um, newness and romance for some of you Capricorns, um, something surprising and out of the blue. Why? Because of your anus. And we also have uh, Neptune. And Neptune is going to also be in your third house in Pisces. So what this means is there's going to be a surprising element when it comes to love and romance. So it could be uh, meeting a person out of the blue and the connection is to the dot. Like that is the person you've been waiting for. That is the person you've been asking for. Um, that's if you have not already made a soul connection in this year because that was very highlighted for Capricorns as well. So again, could be from now all the way to um, all the way to uh, June. So keep that in mind, Capricorn. Now Pluto is in your first house. Depending on your sun and rising, if Pluto crosses your sign, major transformation outside energy. This is uh, bringing transformation, but also it comes through acknowledgement of self trauma. So certain things about your past may come up, right? But this is for a positive, and I'm not talking about like connections from the past, although it may happen, but this has more to do with like dealing with suppressed trauma. This could have been a situation as an example, if you've been carrying some type of grudge or some type of um, hurt or pain uh, from your mother's side, as an example, that conversation may come up where there is initiation to address that but also to bring not closure but more healing so again do not be surprised if you you know are put in that situation my advice for you guys is to deal with that and address that um i actually experienced something similar uh last year uh in regards to that and instead of running away from it i kind of addressed it head on and you know it was healed it was a lot of healing that needed to happen, and, and it did. And uh, for, for that, I'm very grateful because it 
create a stronger connection and bond. So again, um, these traumas are necessary for us to address to be able to go into the next cycle of our lives, no longer carrying that type of energy. Remember, it's, you know, Saturn has always been the sign of karma. That's how I see it. Um, so we've been going through this transition of dealing with a lot of karmic cycles, but you're finally coming to its conclusion, Capricorn. So um, major changes here. Uh, Pluto in Capricorn in your first house, depending on uh, your rising, if it crosses your sign, major transformation, outside energy, like I was telling you guys. Um, a lot of healing, like I said. Uh, very beautiful energy, you guys. I highly encourage you guys to really put yourselves um, towards achieving your goals. Uh, I think that a lot of Capricorns have been tested, and you're going to be seeing those rewards for those of you guys that uh, start to feel the pressure, have been feeling the pressure the past couple of months. Uh, it's time to rise and to rise to the occasion. You're more than capable out of, you know, out of a lot of signs. <laughs> you're the goat, right? Uh, climbing, overcoming, overachieving. Um, so again, you know, best foot forward. All right, you guys, I was trying to make this very quickly. For some signs, it's going to be a little bit quicker than others. But let's see what's coming towards you guys. I'm going to do a 12 month, uh, 12 month, a 12 month um, spread to see exactly what's coming towards Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of, two, or not the month, sorry, for the year 2021. Spirits, please give me a set of 12 cards set of 12 cards to represent all 12 months for the month for the year of 2021 Capricorn Sun Moon Rising Venus Oof, we got some jumping okay all right so we have January February March April May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Okay. All right, Capricorn, for January, you have the Knight of Swords and the Three of Cups. So again, uh, the Knight of Swords can represent um, going in very strongly into the year 2021. For some of you guys being like focused on achieving your goals or going towards your happiness more than anything, uh, unapologetically. Uh, with the Three of Cups, this could represent, obviously, ce celebratory type of energy, but this can also represent uh, being able to experience firsthand um, the blessings that are being bestowed upon you. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be a situation that uh, brings to you a lot of happiness. Uh, a lot of happiness, uh, for some of you guys, this could even be um, having the getting news, getting news about some type of celebration that is taking place. But more than anything, what they're saying here for January is there's a lot of cutting ties with this night or sorry, with this night of swords, um, cutting ties in regards to your social circle. So again, don't be surprised if you feel or you come to the understanding of someone around you or a friend or a colleague, someone you trusted. Um, there could have been some news that comes to you that is very connected to feeling like you kind of predicted or you kind of had this intuition, something to do with not fully trusting them lately, those answers are going to be revealed to you in January for sure. Now for February, here we have the Five of Swords and the Knight of Cups. So there's opportunity for love, Capricorn. What they're telling you here is, again, do that hard work that is necessary in order to release yourself from repeating cycles, okay? Especially when it comes to love and romance, you guys. This is, it's almost like what they're saying is you've 
gone through a transformation, do not pick up stones that have already been removed from your path in regards to love, okay? So for some of you guys, this could be an ex popping back up in February, uh, wanting to reconnect, wanting to restart some type of fire. What they're telling you here is, again, uh, let go of those cycles and only embrace new beginnings, okay? You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you end up dealing with this spinning circle that you've been dealing with for the past how many years Capricorn so again don't put yourself in that situation with the knight of cups there is love around you um and especially the three of cups options here coming through for you but again don't entertain the past all right for March you have the eight of wands and king of swords for some of you guys, this could represent an opportunity, an opportunity for growth and advancement. For some of you guys, this can be uh, achieving some type of escalation, uh, whether it be in regards to your career, your professional life. Uh, this could be an advancement. This can also represent uh, really putting your energy and focus towards things that you're wanting to build. So for some of you guys, March is going to be very heavily um you know, having to do with self-independence. So for, that's what I'm hearing, self-independence. So for some of you guys, it's starting your own business. For others of you, it's actually getting a business off the ground that is going to be very prosperous for you. Do not hesitate and do not put it in the back burner anymore. Now, for those of you guys that have been trying to go up the ladder in regards to your career, there's definitely some type of transition that's happening here where the spotlight's going to be pretty much put on you. And it's almost like I'm hearing that finally people are seeing your hard work or finally taking an acknowledgement of that hard work that you've been putting. Remember, uh, Jupiter and Saturn are leaving your first house. So the first house is self, which means uh, you probably have been noticed this year for sure. Um, but finally, in March, there is almost like this change or this shift in energy where you're going to be able to actually see the monetary compensation for your hard work now for april we have the high priestess and the hermit card okay capricorn for those of you guys that are single this is a soulmate type of connection this is your equal the person that's going to match you this is an individual that is going to be very intuitive perhaps for some of you guys especially those of you guys that are um, either in the esoteric or very spiritual this is a person that's going to equal your energy they are definitely coming through, and they're coming through very strongly for you guys. Now, for some of you guys, this connection is already manifested uh, because they're telling me this connection has already happened, uh, but perhaps it hasn't deepened or it hasn't progressed. Uh, April, very high, li very likely to get into a relationship, a partnership. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be uh, getting into a partnership with a mentor, someone that you really admire, that you really look to, uh, that is going to really help you uh, advance in your spirituality, uh, really deepen that connection to higher spirit. For some of you guys, this is a spiritual awakening as well in the month of April. So uh, heavy energy there, mm, transformative uh, for sure. Now for May, you have a wish coming through. In May, we have the star card here with the 10 of pentacles. So the star card is illumination. This is a wish fulfillment card. This is Aquarius energy. For those of you guys that have placements in Aquarius, whether it's your moon, your rising, uh, and Capricorn is your sun, major transformation in regards to your finances. So they're talking to me about the triple or quadruple of what you're making now. This can also represent, uh, for some of you guys, purchasing your first home. For others of you, a wish fulfillment that has to do with financial stability. There is massive expansion here for the month of May. Uh, now, for others of you, it could be wish fulfillment in regards to some type of marriage or commitment here coming through, as they are saying um, commitment is coming through. And they're also saying here, it's almost like, it's almost like for some of you guys, I'm feeling very strongly like May is going to be a month where you're going to feel like you can't believe it's happening or you can't believe it's all happening. Uh, very strong, powerful energy here, you guys. And... Okay, so I could not have made this up. Um, so we go from that, May, to June. You have the Ten of Cups, Emotional Fulfillment, 
And the four of wands, there is marriage, there is engagement, there is partnership, there's moving in here. Um, for some of you guys, this is taking it to the next level. For others of you, this is actually walking down the aisle. For others of you, this is love hitting you and smacking the hell out of you. Um, and I feel that that's going to start to unfold for you guys um, very highly with the hermit and high priestess. I feel that the months that are very strong are coming very strong for you guys is going to be um, January, February, January, February, April, May, and June is what they're saying. Um, so again, you know, wish fulfillment, this is all to do with, uh, you know, taking it to the next level in your life. Capricorn, for some of you guys, uh, with the star card, the 10 of wands, the 10 of, sorry, the 10 of pentacles, the 10 of cups and the four of wands. For some of you guys, this could represent retiring or getting to the point of being able to fully what they're saying is like being able to fully take in the blessings of your hard work and determination. So it's almost like a conclusion of something. So for some of you guys, this could represent retirement, being able to spend time with your family, being able to really be present and in the now. And we all know Capricorns have a tendency of forgetting to do that because of hard work. So again, uh, beautiful energy here. All right, that was April, May, June. Let's go into July. So for July, you have the Fool and the Page of Wands. So for some of you guys, new expansion, new beginning, uh, taking a new path or a new course for some of you guys. Uh, for some of you guys, this could represent um, wanting or having the desire or even planning to go on a trip, go on vacation. Um, for others of you, this could represent taking a new chance at a new beginning, uh, in regards to business, in regards to finances, um, this is very, this is very like Aryan energy. I'm feeling like fire energy, very impulsive. Be careful in this month. Um, yeah, because they're saying here in July, there may be like, um, there may be some type of opportunity that comes up for some type of investment. Be smart about your investment. You don't want to be impulsive and lose that money. So just be careful uh, with that Capricorn, okay? All right, so now let's do April, May, June, July, August, okay. August, we have here the Ace of Wands and the King of Cups. So there's an offer coming in for you Capricorns. Uh, this could be in connection with... Um, this could be in connection with a career. Um, I don't, I'm hearing career, but I feel like it's not so much career. It has more to do with your passion or alignment to your passion. So for some of you guys, it could be a situation where you're actually retiring, but you're actually finding a new passion, a new motivation, and you start to submerge yourself or give yourself into that passion and really igniting your soul or lighting your soul on fire like you're intense and you're passionate about this um this new beginning for you or this new path or this new calling for some of you guys even uh heavy energy in regards to calling so uh again like i said it could be that you for some of you guys it could be that you are becoming very self-reliant and financially stable where you're able to walk away from a career and make a major transition in regards to uh, following your heart and your passion, what you're really passionate about. And this can actually turn into um, financial gain for some of you guys, okay? All right, so we're going now into, let's see, September, okay. September Capricorns, Nine of Pentacles, and the Empress card here, okay. So for some of you guys, like I said, I feel that this King of Cups here with the with the Ace of Wands is following a new passion. The Empress card is your creative outlook. This is something that, like I was saying, it's funny. Um, because I feel that with these cards, what they're telling me here is you may actually fall into your calling without even knowing that it's your calling you do it because you enjoy it you love doing uh this hobby this um 
something that has to do with learning, something that has to do with you may start something that you're doing it just to, you know, keep yourself busy or whatnot, and it actually turns into monetary gain is what they're telling me. Now, with these two cards here, the Empress and the Nine of Pentacles, this is following your creative outlook or following something that you're trying out and you become very passionate about that it brings to you a lot of financial stability with the Nine of Pentacles here. For others of you, this is Nine of Pentacles. It could be the manifestation or some type of uh, manifestation for you women out there that are trying to get pregnant. Usually the Nine of Pentacles doesn't really speak to me about pregnancy, but it's speaking to me very highly with this Empress here. So for some of you guys uh, around this month, uh, pregnancy is very, very high for you or your wife can get pregnant around this time. Uh, I see very bountiful type of energy. This is the birthing of something. For some of you guys, it could be the birthing of a new business, a new career endeavor. Um, major expansion here. Okay, so now we're going into, <coughs> excuse me, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So in October, you have the Eight of Cups and the Strength card. So the Eight of Cups could represent walking away from a situation that is no longer serving you for some of you guys with the strength card. It could be you walking away from some type of intense relationship, uh, intense uh, partnership that was mostly based on physical connection. Um, for those of you guys that are married or for those of you guys that have been in a committed relationship, Capricorns, be careful uh, because around this time frame, you may be very tempted uh, to actually step out of your relationship. Um, I always tell you guys, you know, uh, karma is real, you guys, and whatever it is that you put out comes back to you, and it comes back to you tenfold. So um, if you're in a, a relationship that is no longer serving you or no longer helping you become a better version of yourself, then you need to step the fuck away from that relationship and allow that person to find their happiness just like you should follow your happiness, um, but do it the right way. I, I, I'm being told here... Um, it's almost like feeling temptation is there and you're wanting to take two different, you're on two, like on crossroads or having to take two different paths uh, and temptation may be heavier. So again, uh, be cautious about that. This can also represent you finding out about a partner that's was or is tempted to step out of the relationship, Capricorn. Just putting it out there. All right, so we have April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. And December. Okay. Sorry, I keep doing that, you guys. Um, okay, so in November, you have the Four of Swords and the Eight of Pentacles. For some of you guys, um, this could be dealing with a relative or a family member, someone that needs to go under surgery. Uh, this can actually be you as well, Capricorn. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Make sure that you're doing whatever is necessary to get your rest, to really, um, you know, get take care of yourself is what they're saying. Uh, the Four of Swords can also represent having the need to take some time off from work. With the Eight of Pentacles, a lot of putting in that those extra hours, working really hard. Um, I feel that for some of you guys, around November, you're going to start to feel like your energy starting to decrease. Again, rest is very important. Uh, don't push yourselves to the limit, you guys. It's always important to maintain balance in our lives. And I think that what they're saying here is uh, should you not pay attention to your signs, to your physical signs, your your physical body is going to start giving you warnings. Pay attention to that. If you don't pay attention to that, it will do what it has to do to stop you and to make you realize that you are pushing it to a limit. So again, be careful with that in November. And finally, for December, you have your card, the Queen of Pentacles with the Nine of Wands. Uh, for some of you guys, this is um, taking some time off after putting a lot of work, a lot of determination, major transformations here for a lot of you guys uh, for the year 2021. Um, the Nine of Wands can also represent getting to the point of culmination for some of you guys. Um, I see this more as not wanting to give up, but I see it more as being able to look towards the past and really see how far you've come. I think that, I think your motivation for 2021 is just keep going. Uh, you will see the manifestations, you will see uh, the major transformations and getting into, uh, or getting to the point of 2021 in December, 
you're going to be able to look towards the past and be very proud of how long or how far you've came Capricorn. All right, my lovelies, I, I'm trying to do these videos short. Apparently I can't because it's already going on 40 minutes. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I don't really necessarily prefer, I don't really like to do long uh, videos as you guys can tell on all my readings, but I feel that this is major and it's very important. So I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Definitely comment, subscribe, like this video. Let me know if you guys want me to do this every single year in the beginning of the year. This is the second year of us doing this. So um, based on your feedback, that's what we will go with. All right. I want to wish you guys happy holidays. I wish you the best and we'll see you soon. Bye.